Alright. Oh, that's gonna see. There you go. What's going on? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, today's going to be a fun one. We have the Wave Tech. Um, say hi. 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 That would be good if we move the table a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. We'll move it a little closer. Bear with us a couple minutes. We've had nothing but technical difficulties. Yeah, that's fine. Ready? Grab right. a side. Ready? One, two, three. Uh, okay. Let's say the thing. One. Get rid of that. Oh, this is crooked, but that's okay. That's cool. Hey, from Portland, what's going on? Yeah. All right, um, just play some. Put some music on. So, a little bit of what's going. Hey, morning from Australia. What's up, Johnny? Hey, okay. So today we're using. We, okay, so the webcaster, the the thing we normally use, isn't here. So if the sound sucks a little bit today, I apologize. We're doing this um, with the phone because we couldn't get the Wavecaster to work. It kept, we've been trying for the past 28 minutes to get this thing to work. And it's not, so it really stinks. Um, so today we're gonna be having old school style back like when we used to do the show. So that'll be fun. Set that down a little bit. But we have the Wavecaster set up. I'm sorry, we have the wave tech. I'm, I've got Wavecaster on the mind. We'll run through a quick housekeeping things real quick. This is going to be backwards. This is going to suck. Anyways, tomorrow, yeah, it's backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. All right, anyways, tomorrow's <laughs> the last day for the sound quality. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, is the sound quality competition. Um, no, it's no. not going to work. Everything's going to be yeah. backwards. Don't even worry about them. <laughs> Uh, other things, you can go back and watch it in the other show. We had it at the beginning of every yeah, show for the last couple of weeks, so it's not a big deal. Um, uh, looks normal to us. Looks normal to you? Okay, cool. As long as it looks normal to you, All it right. says it looks normal to you. All right, it looks backwards to us, so tomorrow, it's not backwards. As long as it's not backwards, Amplified Auto Sports, sound quality competition. This is the address in St. Petersburg. It's from 10 to 4 p.m., We'll be there. Okay, good. It looks good to you. Like yeah. I said, we're looking at it on the phone, so it's backwards to us. It yeah. kind of stinks. Teespring is place you can get the cool shirts. Oh, iTunes, yeah. Google Play, Podmeam is a place where you can find the podcast. Mm -hmm. Patreon. Don't want to forget about Patreon. If you want stickers, five star stickers. And if you want tools, you can go to DNF yeah, tool, tool drawer. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the show. Um, yeah. We're going to have a fun time trying to answer questions because, well, we'll do this, and then maybe we'll grab your phone back off of this, and we'll use that to try and answer questions. We'll so see. we, polarity testers, we're giving those away until we hit 100,000. The problem is we're going to try to do it off the Saturday show, but there's no way to contact you guys from your questions. Mm -hmm. So... We're not going to be using this show in order to, other than to tell you that in order to win this, you can either watch the Facebook show and comment, yep. which Facebook makes it real easy to, to contact you if you've won, um, or if we, you know, if we pick you because they're totally random, or two, if you watch Tuesday's rebroadcast and just comment. I don't care what you say, the weather, the time, just, yeah. just leave a comment. Where are you from? Where I are? can then contact you from your comment in the video and tell you you've won. So this week we gave away two, yeah. one from the YouTube comments, one from the Facebook comments. Normally we're going to be giving away one, and it, it and it's we pick on Saturday. So you have all week to comment on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if, if, like... You don't have to worry. We're, yes, we are in clear water. Yeah, we are in clear water. <laughs> um, so you don't have to worry about, oh, crap, I can't watch it. As long as you comment by Saturday, mm -hmm. like Saturday, not like Saturday midday, but um, thank you. Um, then we'll, we'll, you'll be, because we go through them Saturday morning and we pick winners. Yeah. Okay, and it's random. We just, like, that guy. So... 
Okay, there you go. If you want to win it, now you have two chances. I was trying um, to And house. if you watch the Facebook and comment and watch the YouTube and comment, that means you get twice. Hey, What's Bobby, Bobby? Anaheim. Man, you're lucky. I was going to tell you. I, you're, you're a lucky dude getting to um, go to... He's at Disney right now over in Anaheim, mm -hmm. California. So lots of excitement there. All right, so we have the Wavecaster. The Base wave Restore. Wavetech. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh, Webcat. All right, so here's the base restore. Now, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a harmonic restoration device, and it is designed to give you bass when the bass doesn't exist in the track. Exactly. Now, I was going to play some cool Van Halen for you, but since we're using my phone to do the show today, because, damn webcaster, um, we have Fernando's phone. So go ahead and open your phone. So what we're looking at here is an RTA. Uh, we can adjust the volume output of the song we're listening to. Uh, or we could turn it down, get it to a nice listening level. What are we listening to, by the way? Uh, his name is, what is his name? Christian N Nadu? Yeah, Nadal. Nadal? Yeah. So this is some Latino music. Uh, but you can see how this, you're looking at it. This is treble, this is mid-range, and this is bass. Okay, so it's not, it's not terrible. Like, it's got a little bit of bass, but like here's 80 hertz, and that's here's 100 the hertz. And that's all you're getting. So 50, 40, all that. This it doesn't exist. doesn't exist. So this is just going to give you a do, 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 do. Little bit, yeah. So here's your 0 dB line right here. So with the WaveTech Bass Restore, we can. this is your subwoofer level. So you can actually turn it up. The reason why it's turning everything up is because we're not running an active crossover on it. <laughs> okay. So we'll get it at a nice, we'll get it at the zero point. So we can see. All right, so that's that's about normal listening level. And now we'll go ahead and turn it on. To turn it on, you simply hit the button, and the red light comes on. Boom, look at that. And oh my gosh, look at that. Now that music has a ton of bass. Now there's two knobs on this. The back knob is the effects. So if you turn the effects down, you'll see it starts to decrease and gets less. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have a little less. Okay, and we can control the volume up and down. Oh, let me shut this. That's fine. I need to shut this. I'm trying to do full screens. All right, and it pop back on. Okay, so now let's let's turn this volume back down. All right, so now we have a, a ton of bass happening. Yeah. Now, if we turn it back off, That's all. all that bass is gone. So if any of you are wondering how like these things work, these bass restoration, uh, randomly pick somebody or the polarity checker on YouTube shows the announced, uh, then they have to respond back if they don't snooze, they lose. Yeah, pretty much. And I was gonna read off the name of the people that won, but I can't because there again, we're using my phone to do this. So we'll, right. we'll put it in on Monday's show. So there we go. So that is the base restore. The base restore, yeah, right there. And for those of you that wanted to know how it works, we're gonna try to do an in-depth video on it. We just wanted to go ahead and get it in here and you guys can see it. so you guys could see it. Go ahead and play some, or play. grab grab the show so that we can see what's going on here. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? Oh my God. What? It's just like it. Well, yeah, that's fine. fine. Try to find some questions. Um, while you're doing that, I think I'm going to... <laughs> All right, what's going, going on, guys? What's going on? Yeah. So keep talking. All right, so let's see. What's up from Australia? No, no, just go to the end. How can I connect the LC7i to my factory radio on a 2018 Ford F-150? So I would recommend getting this harness right here. This is the Access. AX DSP FD2. Mm -hmm. And what this is going to have in the box is two cables. It's going to have this big cable right here that you don't need. But then it's going to have this cable right here that you do need. Mm -hmm. Now what this is, is this will allow you to plug your factory harness into here. And this will plug in the back of your radio. And this will give you inputs and outputs for your speaker harnesses. Now we did a video maybe a month or two ago that shows yeah. you how to interface into a T harness. We show you this. Um, go ahead and watch that, but that's the product you're going to want in order to do that. Okay, All right, go ahead. Let's Next see. question. Uh, 
<laughs> air compressor is off. Yes, air compressor is off. How many things you can run off a radio remote turn on before you need a relay? <laughs> so it really depends. Most <coughs> remote turn on devices draw anywhere between um, 0.5 and 0.3 amps. So if you have a let's say a 1.5 amp output, mm -hmm. technically you'd be able to turn on three or four things. Mm -hmm. Now, something like a micro bypass doesn't even draw that. So that really doesn't even really count. It draws almost no amperage. But something like an amplified antenna might draw up to five amps. So that might be too much. That's why we always recommend hooking up the amplified antennas to the accessory output, because it's a bigger output. Uh, we get our ABS from a place called Farco here in Florida. Yeah, um, Clearwater. Um, 19 in Clearwater. Yeah. So really, at the end of the day, two to three things would be the answer I guess <laughs> you're looking for before you need to add a relay. All right. Uh, does, does anyone make a T-harness for the 2018 Kia Soul? Um, there again, all those nice. harnesses, yeah. if you go to metraonline.com, yeah. they have a whole, you just type in your make and model, anything that says it'll work with the Access DSP, more than likely there's a T-Harness yep. for. I have a 2019 Honda Civic hatchback, Sport Manual. Uh, what wire harness can I use to tie into the speed wire so I don't have to splice the factory wire? That's essentially the same question you just yep, asked. Yep, if you yep. need a T-Harness, you know where to go. Metronline.com, um, and that's where you get the harness. You suspend a horses running? 2018 F-150 crew cab box. Um, we use the A-Trend for that. It's basically the same as the 17 and the 16. They didn't change anything yeah. underneath the seat there. Um, I Oh, Fox Box makes the box for the 16 and 17, which is really nice. We do... Uh, is that the one we put the T1s? No, we've done... That's the one we put the T1 shallows in. And the Toyota Tundra. Was that the Toyota Tundra? Yeah. So in the Fox box, we can put regular size woofers in. You just have to have grills. So keep in mind, if you're going to do them, you have to have grills. All right, so this is... Um, moral of the moral story. Moral of the story. Don't, don't do, do Jags. It's no fun, and seriously, it's a pain in the rear. Uh, yeah, uh, Jaguars yeah. Are, are, not, are not fun to do. <laughs> Uh, what's your Stinger opinion on the Blue Stinger on. Select RCA cables? Blue. Oh, the Blue the Stinger blue. Select. Whoa. Stinger uh, Select. I know, I'm trying um, to think. With uh, Paul takes them all. Yeah. Uh, they're not bad. We, we did them for a really long time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Paul sells it's them mainly Texas. over the counter. Yeah. It's not a bad. We've never had one bad. We just we switched know. to the um, 4000s. The 4000s. So for some reason, Dean ordered the 1000s. And that was for a, for a mistake. So we just like, okay. But we sell, but, okay, so yeah. we sell, I'm gonna say thousands of those Stinger Select, yeah. the, the clear blue cables, yeah. not the opaque blue cables. Yeah. We don't get any of them back, so. Yeah. Okay, um, I had a LC61200 die after yeah, one month. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, when we, you ever see it happens before? No, we I haven't had it. that happen. But I will say that that is really, uh, it's rare, like uh, odd. Um, but yeah, but they have an amazing warranty. Oh, don't, product, you don't have so to worry about it. They have five year warranty. Yeah. So uh, you you actually like they do cover. have the they do have the best um, warranty. Yeah. What, yeah. Is it? what was that one? Hold on. Oops, sorry, guys. Oh, I can't. Can you do stop it. it and go up? Um, the amp bypass harness for the RP4 fit and worked out of the box without reprogramming it in the Dodge Ram. Thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, do you reply that? Uh, what, who you recommend for boxes? Oh, days? Jason. Hey, what's up, Jason? What's up, Jason? Mobile Jason? Solutions was fantastic. That is yeah. awesome. What was that? Uh, what do you recommend for uh, salt boxes? 
now these days. Like you say, we, uh, we use we A-Trend. Do A-Trend. We do Foxbox. Foxbox. We do, um, um, we do some of the, what's that other brand? The Q, uh, Q, Q the Power. Q Power, Q Power thing. Q Power, mainly uh, the Rhino line Q Power. And when we actually need a box, this is specific. Dean decide, like designed the whole thing. And then we have Sean. And actually Sean's from, made the box used to box work at Bright Star. Bright Star mm-hmm. went out of business. So the guy that worked there, Sean, we just call him and he's doing it on the side now. Yeah. Out of his garage. So I keep telling him that he needs to build a website and make some of the key boxes and offer. And he's All right. Like, so what's the difference of app radio to app radio live? Um, I just turned it off. No, no. I'm like, what are you going to have these okay, so what's the difference? App Radio and App, app radio, radio Live. And app Radio Live. App Radio was an actual radio. That, that was the was, first one. That was, that was their first go at it. This was before Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Yeah. It was their way of trying to get some map into Like communication radio in your and, phone. And, and then the app, radio. Radio came, app Radio Live came out, which was kind of a joint venture between, what is it, Web? Web, what's web link web link uh-huh. and pioneer and it just kind of wrapped it in a nice little bow but at the same time they were wasting all that money on that um carplay came out so that was the end of that we've been using stinger x1s instead of rcas that come in the stinger oh yeah those are cool i think we might be switching to those too the x1s or <laughs> the x3s i don't know these are the these are also the x cables here they hi they from germany nice. these things are pretty sexy uh, hi from Germany. What do you hey. think about the Alpine PDP E800 DSP amplifier? Is that, is that the one I have in my car? I'm assuming it's the same one, PXE. This is uh, PDP E. Well, they make well they make that eight channel one. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say because it's like it's in Germany, but I mean they has the PXE 0A50S in the car in, in his car and, and it's good. Right? Well, yeah, but I do know in Europe they have that other fo- eight channel, yeah. which is yeah. way, they don't make that in the US. Right. And it looks really cool. So these are the X1 cables that they keep referring yeah, yeah, to yeah. here. You gotta put it like, oh, sorry. it's not. Sorry. I'm looking hey, at the wrong thing. All right, so these are the X1 cables here that he keeps referring to. These are really nice. Um, these are basically very equivalent to the 4000s we're using, which. Yeah. Honestly, that's probably the reason why I'm going to switch is I like the ends on the X1s a little bit more than I think I'm going to like the ends on these. So, yeah. And then, of course, these are the... Are, which ones are these? The X3s? Is that what they call these? Uh-huh. These are the X3s? That's the X, yeah. yeah. X3s? Yeah. So these are the big dogs. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's what we have on the test right now. Yeah. All right. So here he comes. Okay. Hang on. Fox Boss have the baddest box on the market. Yes, they do. Uh, just got done hey on guys, the pir- you skip Ooh, my just question. got done on the pirate ride. All right. I love the pirate ride at Anaheim way better than I love the pirate ride <coughs> at, at Florida. We went on it like four times because that's awesome. Okay, All right, so ahead. you skip my question. I'm so sorry. Uh, please tell me, how do you guys connect the passive crossovers in the back of the vehicle? Which wires are ran? So if we're... Regardless of where the passive crossover goes, <clears throat> we're going to run, uh, it's kind of an odd question, I guess. Um, so if, let's say we, you see one of the amp racks and we have a bunch of passive crossovers to them. Out of the amplifier into the passive crossovers, out of those passive crossovers, the wires all run forward into the speakers, be it either just up to the tweeters or into the factory wire harness and out to the doors. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a matter of where you, you can put them wherever you want. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, best best SQ brands depends, man. Uh, there's a ton it's of a them. It's a that they actually make it really nice. Most of them are, equipment. you know, overseas, European. So there's a there's a ton. What's that, Randy? We are doing good. We are doing good. Uh, you have six hundred bucks for a mono amp to push two twelves. What would you buy? Ooh, that's a good one. LC like one point eight hundred. Yeah. Um, if I'm low on space, I'd go the T, the uh, 500 or the no, 750, 750. 750. Ooh, I wonder how much this guy costs. This, this, uh, oh, oh, the kicker right there, yeah, the yeah, 800, the, the, yeah, the KX, the kicker KX, because then I'm going to get this technology that we've been uh-huh. talking about built directly into the amplifier. No, now I and don't know also, how much the Phoenix Gold costs. 
I don't either. I have no idea. But you can check it out. Six hundred yeah, bucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Pull it out. Keep going. Ask me a question. Go home. Ah, uh, yeah. Soon. Soon we're going. Uh. Oh, God, this is heavy. So first off, we want to apologize again. The show we're, we're, late. we're using our we started late because our webcaster died, and we the, the Prime twelve hundred one isn't bad. But if you have the money to spend, spend it. Don't worry, it's okay. Uh, but we're streaming this off our phone this week, so questions are going to be kind of missed because <coughs> that's why he's staring at his phone. <coughs> Sorry, we're trying to get up with what's going on. All right. So, any idea why my forty one hundred keeps? Uh, we don't randomly, get that radio here from Romania. Uh, randomly disconnect the CarPlay when I'm playing music. Uh, it's a forty one hundred. You gotta check the uh, the software update. Oh yeah, you definitely. You definitely have update. to check that. If you're not. Check you um you actually lining cables. Sometimes those lining cables go bad. On Make sure ends, you yeah. buy a really really good. really good cable and um and try that. But try the software update first. So this is fourteen hundred and fifty eight watts, uh, according to Jessica. Um, Jessica, test it. Look, look at that, man. Look at that bad. Oh, that's it. That's Ooh. what I want. That's sexy. Yeah, it Ooh. is. It smells good too. Smells so what? Yeah. A new? God, that's heavy. So yeah, I mean, this is a big, this is a biggie, this, this is a big amp. So that's that's a lot of power. So depends what you're trying to run. All, All right, right. That, was, that was a lot of work just to get that out the show for two seconds. Yeah, X Men, it's in the house. What's going on? Lost water. I have an audio control DSP arm. They work really well. They do. They really nice. Uh, Options to do work. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, I have a 2012 you? Honda Odyssey. I'm thinking I'm getting a 10.1 tablet connected via Bluetooth and installing window. Yeah, the punch will give you a ton of power keys. also. Yeah, I mean, if you actually somebody can make it work, yeah, definitely, it man. Uh, a tablet, 10.1 tablet. Okay. Um. Like in the Honda Odyssey, you can actually change the radio, um, maybe have more features. I don't know if that's what you're trying to do and just connect the tablet, but yeah, no problem in the Odyssey. Um, let's see. Oh, that's why you talk about the RCAs. If the RCAs make a difference, right? You already got that? We didn't really talk about RCAs making a difference, but the answer to that question would be yes. I mean, yeah, RCAs make a big difference. It's just creaking over. What? Here. I'm like, what are you seriously, dude? We are live, and you doing your things? Wow. All right, cool. No. All uh, right. Hey guys, please tell me how do you guys can? Oh, um, never mind. Sorry. That uh, I. Over I mean, if we, if we want to talk about RCAs for a minute, yeah, sure. Uh, RCAs are pretty. So the prettier they are, the more expensive they are. The reason why the more expensive they are is because they've they've made them pretty. By pretty, I mean they've put more stuff inside of them. Mm -hmm. uh, more shielding, more shielding, so more they can runs kill the noise. of. So, for example, like a nine thousand, a Stinger nine thousand, it has a run of silver and a run of copper. Yeah. So that it's actually almost four RCAs, yeah. the equivalent of two RCAs. Okay. What do you got? I have this beautiful. I don't know why I don't have one of those over here. Uh, because you are not cool. Yeah. All right, look at this. This is a nine thousand. So what they're trying to show you here is that there's 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 more stuff going on. So there's a copper run, there's a silver run, there's a copper run, there's a silver run, there's a shielding, there's a shielding. It's a lot going on yeah. to reduce a ton of noise. Yeah, and also they have, of yes. course, yes. for the other ones, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. so you have like an, like an X, X1, it's three wires, three wires aside. So basically you have a no shield, mat, no you have we have what they call a drain, a yeah. shield, and a, the center pin. Yep. So um, there's three wires as opposed no. to like 12. <laughs> we haven't done a Tesla yet. No, not yet. But we have two Teslas right yeah, in the back. Yeah, right out of the parking lot. Right in the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Bismarck, what's going what's on? What's going on, man? Um, Jamaica. Bismarck. Uh, which would you recommend? Audison. Oh, what was that one? Yeah. Well, let me see if I can scroll back. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. 
Uh, Odyssey Bit 10 or a DSR-1? Ooh. Uh, hang on. Before you... Uh, I'm going to think about that. Go ahead. Bismarck, thank you so much for the e-cars that you sent us. Oh, yeah, us. yeah. Thank you. Uh, that, was, that was really cool. Appreciate yeah, we got to use those. Yeah. Because we, we actually have a T1 of flats like they just built right down the street. Um, so, okay. DSPs. Let's talk about DSP because you can never not talk about enough DSP. And, and there's a few essential things that make DSP DSP. So, uh, as we say, you have to have some <laughs> form of time correction, mm -hmm. uh, which basically means adding delay uh, into a signal. Dean, 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 Dean. What, 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 what? Um, no, Mike, 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 Mike. Um, and then you have to have some form of level control for each channel, meaning each, each speaker that you're putting in has to be able to turn that volume up and down independently from one another. Most of them are going to have some form of equalization for each channel that has a speaker attached to it. So if you have eight channels of DSP, you have eight channels of equalization. And then you have to have a crossover for each channel as well. So as long as you have those four things, you've basically got the modern DSP. Now there's different forms of equalizers. There's parametric and there's just standard graphic. But that just comes <laughs> down to that manufacturer and how they want to build their product. Yeah. Now, with that aside, let's look at how do you interface with them. Do you use a laptop? And if so, are you Windows or Mac? Do you use a tablet? Or all three? So when you look at like an Audison product, and this is no offense to them, because uh, we actually have the Forza hopefully coming in next week yeah. uh, for me. The next yeah, week. So excited. Yeah. No, no, it's here. He sent me pictures. He's Where teasing. Is it? He's, he sent me teaser pictures. Like, I got him. I'm like, you bring me mine. It's nice. Um, so they're Windows only. Okay. And, and Kicker is Windows only. And Alpine is Windows only. But both Kicker and Alpine uh, give you options for an iPad or iPhone. Yeah. Odyssey doesn't. Mm -hmm. DSR-1 is straight up pad only, yeah. meaning Android or, or I, Apple. We've only used the Apple iPad for it, but um, audio control is all three, depending on out of the box, it's it's both Windows and Mac, yeah. but then you have to buy the little Bluetooth and you can do iPad, not worth it. Um, so it depends. Now, if you're a Windows guy, then that debate really doesn't matter much. If you're a Mac guy, then that debate is kind of like, hmm, that uh, kind of sucks. So, are the WaveTech base restore and epicenters essentially the same? There are subtle differences, which we'll talk yeah. about in a minute. Let me finish this. Um, so, what I recommend is figure out how you plan on interacting with it. Nice thing about the DSR-1 is you can get in, you can go boom. Nice thing about the Audison, it has presets. So you can actually put the, the DRC in there and scroll through and do presets. You so can't do that with the DSR-1 to mm -hmm. change between let's say your hip hop EQ setting and your and your slow jam hip hop set or setting, you gotta offload, onload, you gotta do a whole bunch of stuff. So that's where it kind of can get crazy. However, DSR1 also has a global EQ. So you can actually get in and, and like after you're done with your tuning of all 2,700 channels, you can come back in and like just add a little bit of trouble. All so, right. Hope um, that answers that. What's the easiest way to integrate into the Toyota factory system? Ooh. Put a new radio. Yes. Yes. The best way you can do it is put a new put radio. Put a new radio. Um, With that out of the question, like you're like, oh man, I want to keep my Toyota radio. First question I'm going to ask is why? And then I'm going to be like, okay. Now, if you have the JBL system, obviously Amp Pro or uh, iData AR. IDATA AR. If not, just plan on it not sounding that good because there's going to be holes and there's going to be all pass filters and you're just going to have a lot of fun there. And with that, you're going to want, for one, you're going to want a DSP that has a parametric EQ, because mm -hmm. that's going to be a little bit easier to play with than, let's say, just a standard 31-band yeah. EQ. Um, and then just be prepared, because it's not going to be easy. Now, that's if you want to improve the sound. Mm -hmm. If you just want to make it louder, which a lot of people do, they like the way it sounds, just not loud enough, <clears throat> well, then keep it simple. Uh, just add channels to each channel in the car. So mm -hmm. if it's a standard Toyota that just has front and rear, get a LC7i, put that bad boy in there, and rock on. 
add amplifiers Renegade. to it. Renegade, what's You'll get a little on? bass roll off, but you can fix that with the LC7. What's up from Southern California? All right, Dean, can you, uh, do you know how to change the splash screen on the Kenwood Exelon uh, <laughs> DNX719? Um, no. And, and the reason why is, yes, you can do it, but it is the, the reason why we never do it or put a video out on it is because they, they sent us a link on how to do it, and it was like, you got to be kidding me. They really want you to jump through hoops to do it, so it's it's almost to the point where it's not even doable. Yeah. So that's All why. right. Uh, two good Hold on. Cans. After Market Radio 2007, I see rear seat back entertainment. Um... You're gonna to want to hire on radio if you want to retain your rear seat entertainment. Something I look at something in the Kenwood Kenwood lineup like a um, uh, nine eight ninety eight ninety five I think or eight yeah, yeah eight ninety five I believe or eight nine zero five. That'll give you dual zone entertainment. All right, okay. uh, two good tens or one great twelve Ooh. for a Ram crew cab. Oh, the well, that's easy. Box. Uh, yeah, the T. Um, I'm doing tens. The tens. Yeah. I'm doing tens in a fox box. I didn't like the way like we've done twelves and no, the tens no. sound way better the just because of the airspace and it was way cooler there. All right. So uh, that, which, which do do you sell uh, Polk? Go ahead. Do you sell uh, Polk? Polk Audio? Do we before? sell Polk? Uh huh. No, I've never sold no. Polk. We just carry a few brands here just from the rain stuff. Uh, question was between the difference between an epicenter and a wave tech couple things the wave tech is a dual knob here so this allows you to adjust the effects on the inside this allows you to have your cell for level control so it's all built in which is really nice uh, you can turn it on and off from here which you can do with the audio control you also have a clip light indicator this light you keep see blinking down here so this has clip light right now we're clipping mm -hmm. the hell out of it because we're overdriving it but hey yeah. overdriving is sometimes fun oh I see it's awesome. so we'll turn it down yeah. Okay. Listen, so uh, plus we have the gains over accentuated here because it looks really cool on the screen. What's up, John? Scotty, what's going on? I um, love little clip indicators. <laughs> <laughs> Why are my 2015 Ram dash speaker 8 ohm? Can I replace it with 4 ohm? Yeah, yeah, okay, so the reason why they make them 8 ohm is because your dash speakers are the high speakers <laughs> up in the truck, and what they're trying to do is tone them down. Because if not, they would be the loudest speaker and you wouldn't hear the door speakers. So they want you to hear all that. So if you do replace them with a four ohm speaker and put a 47 microfarad cap on it, uh, which you can find at DNF tool drawer, um, they're going to be louder. They're going to be a lot louder. They're, they're, so, but that's not the worst thing in the world because they actually they're going to sound a little better and more than likely you're going to be adding in a tweeter, which means they're going to sound even better. Now, if you want to get something for those, Kenwood does make that new set of three and a half mm -hmm. slash six by nines. Yep. So you get the three and a half coaxials and the six by nines. They come with all the crossovers for you. And also, if you do have the uh, premium sound system in there, you can bypass the crossovers and just hook them up that way. Now, if you want to run them on their own little amplifier so that you can control the output of it, that would make them even sound better. But 95% of the people, actually probably 99% of the time we put those speakers in there, yep. it's just run them out, man. And most people are like, God, thank God, this sounds 100% better because the sound is really low in that car. It's it's because they're trying to get that, that mid bass out of that door and it just sounds, ugh. by putting the, the forum up in the dash, it does bring that sound stage up a lot. And with the nice set of three and a halfs, we'll make it sound 100% better. Uh, somebody say, uh, man, I just had a time with the 2006 Equinox. Can you tell me the model number of that module? The Equinox. Uh, need the aftermarket stereo for the 2006 Equinox. It's going to be an RP4 something something. Um, Packdashaudio.com. Yeah. Check it out. You can find Type what you model need. number. And year, just find everything. whatever they say for RP4. Because the RP4 will allow you to retain your steering wheel controls. It'll do away with your OnStar and make your life awesome. I uh, know we haven't played with any of the DC audio. So, I mean, honestly, we like, we don't know. Um, oh, so that's a good one. So, real quick. Uh, ask the R-Type components, uh, 100 watts passive or 50 watts active. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 100 watts passive. You're really not robbing that much power. It's not a 50%. You're not you're not losing a 50 no, 50 uh -huh. power loss, um, and where you're going to really notice the, the difference is in the mid bass. 
because you can attenuate the tweeter down, which is really what you need to do by going active, is being able to control that output of the tweeter, because typically the tweeters are just... So you can set that at negative, the first negative setting, which is gonna bring the tweeter down, and then that extra amount of that 100 watts going in there for the mid base is gonna give you a lot more power to those mid base and make them strong, very strong. Um, okay, so for the Honda Odyssey, you gotta go to uh, packaudio.com, metroonline.com, uh, and type the model number of your car, year, everything, all the specifications. Then we give you harness, dash kit, antenna adapters, everything. You know, he's, he keeps asking about retaining the, the rear infotainment system. Yeah. Um, I don't have. I can't look it up while we're talking. If you yeah. if you want to call us That's or, what I'm, or, or yeah. something else, when we, we we can do it more. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. That's yeah, where, where we're don't, at. I don't have my computer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, see you in the house. Want to upgrade my speakers with 2019 Touring. Focals. Yeah. What was that? Um, about Focal access line on the front speakers, what would you recommend for the rear speakers? Uh, you want to match the front and rear speakers. Regardless of the brand you're going with, you always <laughs> want to match like for like. Yep. There's a word called... I refer to it as timber. Some people pronounce it as timbre. And basically what it means is the harmonics of the speakers have to match. Meaning if you want with access up front, you want to go with access in the back. Focal or Hertz is totally up to you. They're both awesome. They're All right. Wrong anywhere. Hey um, guys, I have any, you have any experience with the Kenwood Exelon DNX 9996XR yet? Um, yes. Does the bribe does the brake bypass still works on this unit? Yes. Yeah. Kenwood hasn't changed anything. Simple. Same, same thing. Yep. We haven't done the review yet on it because we just haven't had time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll, because... I actually post, uh, post a picture of the yeah, XR yeah, yeah, yeah. on the Toyota um, Tundra. Yeah. Because this week was, was there again. Last week was hectic. This week was hectic. Because I went and saw Kiss. Yeah. Um... Hey guys, I uh, missed that one. Uh, yeah. I want to bypass the factory amp for the 2012 Ecross. Can't find any kits and harnesses. Much All right, so you're probably not going to find anything specifically for what you're looking for on that. Um, a lot of the times, like amplifier bypasses and stuff like that, no one really claims to have those things because they don't. But they do. They just don't know they have them. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to want to what you need to do first off is you need to take picture you need to pull the stuff out and you need to take pictures of the harnesses anytime you're trying to figure out how to bypass an amplifier or bypass a radio or integrate mm -hmm. with a radio you need to know what your factory harnesses look like that is the most important thing take pictures of them so when you get to that factory amplifier pull the plugs out take a picture of those and the reason why i say that is because most manufacturers make these random harnesses. Thank you, Jason, okay, thank you for watching. They, they know they sell, but they sell them for different things. So, for example, AMP makes this guy right here. It's APH GMO2. Yeah. Now, the APH GMO2 is a bag of harnesses, okay? It comes with a whole bunch of stuff here. And this guy, this guy right here <laughs> is the most popular used, everyone uses this cable, okay? And that's why it's important to have pictures of what they look like. So. We just did a, oh, a 12? Was it a 12? I think it was a 12. 12 or 13. Okay, yeah. Tahoe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 12, I think. Bypassing the factory Bose system. All right? Mm -hmm. It was these harnesses. They weren't pinned right. They were totally pinned wrong. But, but that was, was the these harness. harnesses. So yeah. we had the harnesses. We didn't have to cut any. So don't assume that it's because the harness is mad, like it match, it's going to be yeah, yeah. Same. So they have them. They're just, they're not going to hold your hand while you're putting them in. It's Why just, not? Yeah. Well, because they're not cool like that. So there you go. That's, that's right. what you got to kind of do. But once you have, uh, for example, a video you guys are going to see here shortly, we did an older Toyota Sequoia. Mm -hmm. Same problem. They don't make amplifier bypasses for those, but they have the harness. The harnesses. Mm -hmm. We just gotta <laughs> All right. our harnesses and plug them in. Do you personally prefer active or passive? When I'm installing, I prefer passive. My own stuff, I prefer active. Active, yes. Um, and the reason for that is right now I'm I have not sitting in your car going stop. Stop doing that. Stop, stop, stop doing that. Because the problem we run into is that a lot of people feel because they spend money on something that they can abuse the crap out of it. 
And the reality of it is you can't. So stop <laughs> doing that. Um, but I pay for it. Exactly. So <laughs> what we want to do is we want to build a system that you can enjoy for a long, long time and not have any issues with. And so when we put a system in a car, we build it that way. We build it so that you can beat the sh out of it and, and just enjoy it for what it is. So that's why. All right. I want to I wanna upgrade my speakers in my 2019 Towering. Towering? Yeah. Uh, Chrysler 300. Uh, what do you think about the full gal access line? We were just talking about that. Okay, Perfect. next one. <clears throat> uh, good answer is. Who so wants to blow out their speakers loud? Yeah, but I gotta. I, the thing is, is, when you blow your speakers, you gotta come back here, and then I gotta put a bunch of work into it to, to replace them, and it's like it's a lose lose. So I don't I don't want you to break anything. I I'd much rather just have you go away happy, you know, and then come back happy and be like, hey, I want to upgrade. And I'd be like, all right, cool, let's upgrade. Yeah, because then then the customer is like, hey. don't tell me how to play with my toys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey man, if you hey. want to go blind and get hair in your palms, that's up to you. No, but like the problem is like sometimes customers came and like, hey, this is not working. Um, no. What do you think about them. Prime apps for subs? So I will tell you that the most popular sub amplifier we sell is probably the Prime 501. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm not a huge fan of them. I, I honestly, if it wasn't for the price point, Can for you the use, price point, it's great. Yeah. Can but, you use the DSR-1 in any system? No. No, you can't. DSR-1 is limited by a few, a few things. For one, it's it's only got four channels of input. That four channels of input is either uh, line level, meaning high level, yeah. or I'm sorry, high level or line level. Yeah. Um, so front and rear, that's it. There's no summing capability on it whatsoever. It does have a coax digital input and a regular aux, but that's it. So you're limited by that. But if you have something that uh, can, yeah, so you said any system. So no, that, that's it. All right, how new car audio bleep will blow Prime out their speakers? Four. Yeah, that's a, that's a good amp. I mean, Get I a just beginner a, set up in their car and then watch don't get an access TV to video and then crank it up. Yeah, pretty much. That's what they do, literally. Oh, yeah. um, so this guy, uh, we set it up perfect. That was, it sound really nice. We put it outside, customer came, turn it on, he played YouTube with like distortion, oh, crazy yeah. distortion, with and everything access, sounds DSP. horrible. And the hell out of it. I was like, man, we no. had to pull it out yep. from the DSR1. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was fun. Oh, it wasn't their fault. I don't know. We never tested it with uh, that kind we, of crap. No, no. Why, why do you want to play YouTube, sure. man? Uh, what would you recommend for a 2007 Mustang with a bass audio and reverse camera? We like to change the head unit. Ooh, 2000s. Ah, uh, that's gonna put you in Metra. <laughs> um, if you're gonna buy something from us as like product, you can call Paul at uh, the store. Uh, and if you are here in the U.S., he will ship it to you. So if your Outback has four channels of output, front and rear, then yes, you can use a DSR one. Funny how much you like the Access T harnesses, but don't like the DSPs. Yeah. Here's the deal. I'm a love-hate kind of guy, all right? If you make something that is extremely cool, I really don't care what name is on the box, okay? So it, in this case, Access makes, this is a phenomenal product. This is awesome. I will sell this and recommend this to anyone that asks me what to do because it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it works, okay? That's all I ask. I don't care whose name is on the box. If you make an amazing product that works, I'm all for it because it makes my job easier. For one, it makes my job here easier, and two, it makes me telling you guys uh, what piece to get because I know you won't have any problems with it. That's key. Hey, so, Ernesto, thank you for watching. I'm not a, if you're not on my team, you suck kind of guy. I'm a, as long as you make something that works. Thank God, I'm in the bad. team of the but, five star. Thank but you. if you make something that sucks, I'm just not going to be like, hey, you know, I'm not going to call you out. I'm just not going to use it, you know, and be like, man, eh, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to call you out. You I mean, I will call, call you out every now and then. hint <laughs> subtly, just did but. It. Yeah, okay, good call. I was talking on my butt wow. there. Okay, pull the RCAs off the DSR-1 and check the, the RCAs from the head unit to the DSR-1. Okay, they must be talking about checking some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the MVH-1400X have an update? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, screen turns gray with YouTube. Boo. Okay, Not, Okay. so yeah, but there is an update for the 1400. I don't know if it fixes that, so check that out. Um, so, all right, can you ahead. use your tuning equipment on a motorcycle or juice by ear? 
Hello from Iowa. If you, okay, so if you tune in your motorcycle <laughs> inside of a garage where it's quiet, yeah, you can use an RTA yeah. all day long. Why yeah. couldn't you? I mean, actually, that, that, that's what Rockford do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rockford so, has the I mean, and everything. at the end of the day, the, the, the microphone the goes where your ears go. So you just put the microphone where your ear is and run the RTA. I mean, it's, it's no different than a car. The only difference is you have this huge room to compete okay. with. So you are going to get a lot of reflection. Do it at 3 o'clock in the morning in the parking lot where no one's around. Yeah, but also you you driving like a 90 miles an hour. Outside. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day just for a like, motorcycle, you just want it loud. I get it. But, I'm you know, sorry, the question I don't is, have the I perfect image right here. So the, <laughs> I keep wanting to grab the mouse and scroll back. Um, uh, what's the best head unit with nav? Um, okay, so if you're a Pioneer guy, it's going to be the 85? 80, 85. 80, Five oh eight. What is it? Eighty five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eighty five hundred. And if you're a Kenwood guy, it's gonna be the nine nine six. And if yeah. you're an Alpine guy, I have no idea because well, they have they're nav. they have they have a lot. Now I will say, if you like Garmin, buy a Kenwood. If you have anything, if you're with, familiar with Garmin familiar already. With Garmin, yeah. Go ahead and buy the Kenwood. Mm -hmm. um, if you like um, any current preference on wireless CarPlay head units, no, yeah, they all work the same. It's just CarPlay. I mean, here's the deal. CarPlay works the same When, when you ask me if I got, if I had today to go buy a head unit, you're like, Dean, you got to buy a head unit today. And I'm going to be like, oh, it's, it's got to have a screen. I'm going to be like, oh, man, it's got to have a screen. I'm going to go buy a 9906. Okay, right out. I'll tell you flat out, I'm going to go buy a 9906 because that screen is the best screen ever made on a radio. Mm -hmm. The off-axis viewing on it is phenomenal. The glare on it is amazing. Oh, yeah. I can't do anything else with it other than that. Um, I can do wireless CarPlay. I can do wireless Android Auto. And by that, I mean I can't like stream YouTube or any of that stuff because it doesn't have an HDMI input. But I don't care about that. I, I care about being able to see it while I'm driving and, and it being pretty in the dash. And it's very pretty and it's very easy to see. Now, All if right. I need nav, I'm going to buy the 996, which is the same thing with nav. Okay, so what do you prefer, ported or sealed bags? I normally listen rock. Uh, I like ported. Uh, with rock? You need to use 40 hertz test on. You don't need really? to use a 40 hertz test on. Yeah, I like ported. I've always built ported or band yeah, passes. Because um, I'm going to be putting something like this so I can get fat bass out of it. Um, I like fat bass. I like fat, boomy bass. I like a P3 yeah, and yeah. a ported box yeah. going. I like the Scar Audios and a big ported box. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, if. if when I was younger, mm -hmm. I did this for SPL. Mm -hmm. I was not like Jeff that got in the love of this for SQ and was mm -hmm. just like, oh, ooh, one cheese, one cheese. No, I want, man, I want to break glass and have coins flip off my car and do all that fun stuff. It wasn't until I got older that I was like, ooh, Morel, hmm, change of path and went to 110. Mm -hmm. But dude, I had 215s, I had 410s. Um, in an isobaric box, two clamshells, and oh yeah, yay, seventh order. If that's even a thing. Ported, two port boxes. Yeah, it is a seventh order, just like Doug. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was all into that. But what was the question? Ported. Yes, I like ported. Okay, so he liked ported. Where can I find stop sub uh, 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 2004 Yukon with Bose? Stock sub in a Yukon is either in the front armrest or in the back driver's rear side. That's it. Those are the only two places I ever put them in. All uh, right. So <clears throat> this is what? No, go ahead. All right, so this is uh, when you're using the Lumi to set the gains on the sub amplifier. Yeah. Um, do you need to use yes. the 40 hertz test on? You don't need to, but that's a good thing to do. That, that will be, that will be good. You want to still use negative 5, negative 5, negative 10. Um, download. Uh, actually, if you need those test tones to download, you can download at, download those at kicker.com. Kicker uh, in their... We don't have it in I there. got it. I'm working on it. I don't have those. No, I'm going to put up a... We're going to make... We're going to change it. All right. For your stop-start vehicle, you need this right here. IG. You need an IG... Th I IG and 3. Yes. You need one of these. And what this is designed to do is for your stop-start vehicle, it will take care of your car... It'll allow you to keep that remote turn on going when the car starts back up and the power drops. That's what this is designed to do. Yep. So pick one of these up, wire it in where the remote turn on goes and your accessory and you won't have any more problems. Uh, what DSP would you recommend with six channel output other than an LC? Well, LC7i isn't a DSP. <laughs> um, we've been talking about the DSR one a lot, uh, the LC, uh, the DM, I'm sorry, the DM608. Mm -hmm. If you want like an LC7i with 
simple equalization, mm -hmm. you have the DQ61, mm -hmm. you have the LCQ1, mm -hmm. both of those. LCQ1 is an LC7i with an EQ built into it, analog, of course. Um, but none of those are DSPs because they're again you gotta have those four things we talked about earlier in the show to have that. Okay, so what do you recommend for the 2018 Ford F-150 components in the front and coaxials in the back? Yes, six by yeah. nine components in the front. What what kind? Um, so we do a lot of the access. We do. We've a done lot of the access. the max the Maximos. Or uh -huh. is it the Maximos from and we've the done Morales, the Morales yeah. Maximos. We've done the X types. We've done a lot of X types. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sad to say I've done some S types or one pair of S types at least, R which types? I will never do again. The R types weren't bad, but we stopped doing the R types once the X types mm -hmm. came out. Honestly, my three favorites are either going to be the Focal, the Morels, or the X types. Um, oh, we did that eight inch set of Focals. Oh, Focal, yeah, that mm -hmm. was really nice. Yeah, um, and then just the Prima has the eight now and the six by nine in the Odyssey line, which we got in, but we haven't had a chance to do yet. So yeah. those are gonna be nice. I'm kind of anxious to try those out. All right, well, there you go. There's a couple yeah. options there. Uh, I have a technical question about a 96 crown pick. <laughs> okay. Is wireless yeah. Apple CarPlay worth the extra cash versus wired? Have to plug in to change, either, to charge either way. So here's the deal. I drive about an hour a day um, back and forth to here and I don't like plugging in my phone. I never plug in my phone. My, my phone never gets plugged in. When I had the wireless car playing there, it was the greatest thing in the world because there again, it's it's 20 minutes there, 20 minutes, a half hour, whatever. I'm golden. Yeah. We're, if you're driving two and a half hours to work every day, for one thing, my heart goes out to you for sure. But for the most part, we're just hopping in our cars and going for short rides. That's where the wireless, whatever format you want, comes in and is awesome. So, yes, it's worth the extra money in my mind. All right. Uh, is an Epicenter 1200 too much amp for two P3s? Yeah, that's like a lot of power for two P3s. Yeah, that's too much power for two P3s. But oh. if you have the amplifier and you like P3s, eh, that's still too much. I'd find the 600 or go up to the T1s or just go with a bigger woofer altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Or, or you could change the ohm load if you went with a higher ohm load. So that the amplifier was only putting out 600 watts. Whoa, go easy. Uh, you could run them then. All right, I have a technical question on the X Crown Victoria. <clears throat> I'm sorry, on the Crown Victoria. Uh, someone cut the Nothing is wrong with the Crown Vic. We do uh, a ton of Crown Vics. No, but someone cut the connection. Oh. So now he said, um, tells me that I need to tap the passenger kick panel for speakers. Do they have the amplifier? Well, the, the 96 Crown Vic had the amplifier in the rear, though. In the back. If it had it, it was in the back. Um, now, it depends what they cost. So here's the deal. Anytime we get a car in like that, we evaluate it, and we re-solder in a new harness. Yes. Um, Metra, if you go to metraonline.com, they will tell you the 70 dash whatever part number it is for your car. Mm -hmm. Then they also list a 71 version of it. The 71 version is a reverse harness. So what we'd do is we'd order you in the reverse harness and then we'd go figure out if there's wires cut somewhere, we'd solder them all back together. And basically what we're trying to do is build your car back to where it was factory. And then from there, we start putting in our stereo. Cause if it yeah. comes in all cut up, no way, man. No, we're we're gonna we're gonna put it back. Even if it's a '96, it doesn't matter to us because if you're. If the hard I don't exists, want your headache. Yeah. No. You know, I want yeah. it to be perfect. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. If you think so, man. Not from that amplifier. That's 1,200 watts of audio control. It's like uh, a 1,500 watt amp. So yeah, I'm so sorry. The uh, <clears throat> those. We using uh, Dean's phone for broadcasting this. Apparently, the uh, webcaster that we have decided to know. not work today. Yeah. So yes, I'm sorry for the audio. Maybe it's, I'm it's, trying to speak uh, as loud as I can. Yeah, I'm trying to. You know, today, to, it was this or no show. So we we wanted to make sure we had a show so that we yeah. could talk about the cool. But we made it for 50 minutes. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, we wanted to make it with the base restored from WaveTech. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, basically what we got going on here is we're showing you how it works. We'll go ahead and turn it off. So this is a pink noise plane into the WaveTech. Okay, this is... So uh, if you were playing normal music, we can turn up the volume. So now we have loud music. But as you can see, there's nothing going on over here. But if we turn on, boom, look at that. Okay, so oh, turn it on. Turn it on. 
Yeah. There we go. I got it on. So you can see now up. what this is doing is this is bringing up a ton of bass. And we have effect control here so we can turn it down if we just want a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to something like in the, what we played earlier in the show, Latino music, some 70s rock, yep. then you've added in that missing bass track. It's not just an EQ because an EQ only affects individual frequencies. This is actually taking the left and right and <coughs> what's it, restoring them, yeah. hence the name Restore. Really it's adding because you can't restore something that isn't there and giving you big fat bass. Uh, so. I'm so sorry, man. I can't even go back all the way. It's just a lot. Like, like, like we say, every time a car came here with a car harness, it's like we go through everything, like testing every single wire. If you, the harness exists, we solder it back together, and then we start from there. Um, other than that, it's just like, if you don't have that, you gotta go grab your, your meter, uh, tone generator, and start working little by little. It's just... Sucks. Uh, check out the DSR one. The DSR one you need a computer for, and that's totally okay that you disagree with me. And that you, the P3s, you've worked with them and they've handled that kind of power. That's cool. Um, but we typically don't run that much power to them because I I know that that's gonna be tough. Yeah, uh, that's gonna when, be tough. When so. they, they don't want to buy the harness, we just don't do it. We we don't give them the option. It's just like hey, this is what you need to install a harness. That's it. Sorry. You know, that's what we do. Yes, it things. does. That's what, no, no, I'm sorry. Yes, it does use octave restoration like the epicenter <clears> does. <throat> yep, same basic idea. Just to give you an idea, the patent on the epicenter is expired. Expired? Yeah, so that's why. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. That brings us to an hour. Thank you for putting up with the video, whatever it was that we had going on. Oh, cool. That's a that's going to be an awesome install there with the D61200. Uh, so Easy tomorrow right. we will be, if you're here in Florida and you can make it, we will be here checking it out between 1 and 4. Mm -hmm. You have a great evening too, Jason. DNF, DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can go to find all the cool tools that we use in the videos like okay. the amazing panel tool. Look at that thing. This, will, this is pretty cool. Uh, Patreon, place you can go to support the show. Uh, if you want stickers, if you want stickers, back it up just a little bit. Five star stickers at, yep, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And <laughs> then just stickers. Podcast is available there. Teespring slash store slash five stars place you can go to get the shirts. And also remember, if you uh, watch the Tuesday show, the rebroadcast of the Facebook Live, and you comment, that makes you eligible to win one of these. We're gonna randomly pick one of these. You, on Saturday, we randomly pick them, and mm -hmm. we're just gonna send you an email, and that'll yep. be awesome. And then you have two chances to win. You can either win watching the Facebook live show or just commenting on the rebroadcast. So that's it. See you All right, guys. guys later. That's the show. Bye. It's been fun. It's been real. Make sure you guys are here Monday for the Facebook live show. Have a safe weekend. Uber, Lyft, they're cheap. Take them. Don't drive drunk. Don't be stupid.